Yeah, very good. It's been good to have a couple of days off. Uh, it's obviously frustrating when you miss games, particularly when not a, it was only a little niggle and just kept just having little setbacks in, in getting back. So it was nice to get back out there and, and contribute a little bit. It's good. It's actually something I enjoy doing it the last couple of years in the IPL has been... Uh, it, was, it was a bit of a weird feeling when I first started doing it. Obviously, as an opener, you toss goes up, you go off, get your pads on, get ready. So the first couple of games, I found myself going and putting my pads on and just sitting down and not knowing what to do. So, uh, yeah, I enjoy it. it. It's a different challenge. It's something that the game dictates how you have to play as opposed to an opener where you just go out and, and play the same way majority of the time. So uh, it's something I enjoy, though. Whoever's going to bat four or five or six, is they're, they're good batters anyway. They're, they're not too many guys that are bowling all rounders who fill that spot anyway. So I don't think that it, it makes too much of a difference to the side. Probably a might allow you to, to play an extra all-rounder or something. Um, but in terms of strengthening the batting, I don't think so. We, we've got guys, we've got Travis Head, who's got a good record in one day and, and T20 internationals. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it changes a hell of a lot, to be honest. Uh, I've got, I don't have much of an idea, to be to be honest. Um, we just got told the side will be named tomorrow before the game. Davey's obviously flying in this afternoon, so uh, we'll have to wait and see with that. But we still want to win. We've... we've We've underperformed over the last however many years in, in this format, so we want to make sure we keep the momentum going, make sure that we're still, we're still going out there with the, with the right game plans and, and the right intent to, to win every game. You feel it has a great feel every time you play, but I think at the moment we've got guys coming in who have come off the big bash in really good form. There's been guys who have had a long period of T20 cricket, which um, probably has a bit, of a bit of a difference to the way that the side plays instead of... <clears throat> Just guys mixing and matching. Uh, just if you're in England, for example, in the past, we've probably just stuck with a one-day side with one or two players. So I think having guys in really good form coming in is really handy. The guys that are, that have played um, are also coming into the side fresh as well. So they bring that real enthusiasm and the youth that that you're after in T20, and, and it just real excitement around the game. Uh, there's always pressure to perform when you're playing for Australia, but I suppose. In the past, this has been a format that's probably been the most neglected in terms of selections, guys using T20 internationals to freshen up for a test series or an upcoming one-day series if it's at the end of the summer or something. So uh, I feel as though I feel as though when you do play a, a international tournament at home, there's always pressure, but there's a lot more T20 games this summer as well, this summer and up until that T20 World Cup. So I think it gives a chance to to really find a balanced side that that can take us forward into that 2020 World Cup. So I think that's it. That's a bit of the excitement around it as well. Yeah, well, it's also hard because you have guys who are playing test cricket who are some of the best T20 players in the world who, who don't get an opportunity to play big bash. So, again, it's about assessing everyone's performances in tournaments they play around the world and when they do get an opportunity to play for Australia. Um, for example, Mitchell Stark um, hasn't had a chance to play big bash for a long time consistently, the odd game here and there. So, I mean... I think he would be a walk-up start to any T20 side in the world. So uh, I think there, there has to be a little bit of mixing and matching with that and also a little bit of common sense when you're, when you're looking to guys who haven't played much T20 in, in recent time. You don't really. Uh, I think it's just a gut feel every now and then with selection. Um, Josh, like, like you said, four T20s internationals. It wouldn't be many more big bash games, I wouldn't have thought. Test cricket is his priority and... and one day cricket as well, so uh, I can understand that. But at the same time, it does give guys international experience to play in front of big crowds and, and coming here and playing at Eden Park is is one of the more uh, daunting tasks tasks as an international side. The, the crowd's very vocal, they're very, uh, they're very intimidating at times if New Zealand get on top. So to be able to expose guys to that, um, I think is a huge, huge factor and, and something that you can get a real read on how they cope with pressure just, just by small things like that as well sometimes. Yeah, it was obviously disappointing for him and for England and, and fans of cricket, I suppose, that that he wasn't available for the whole summer, but I've played with and against Ben quite a bit, so uh, for him to miss these, these games, I wasn't too upset. Uh, I think Buff got the big salmon thrown at him uh, when he was playing. One hit him in the back, so... Um, oh, they're just a passionate crowd, aren't they? Um, once, once New Zealand get on top in a game, they, they become such a huge factor, I mean... We saw in that uh, World Cup game here when when New Zealand beat us that the crowd was just unbelievable. They they're stuck. They get stuck into you, which is pretty good banter at times. Um, 
a lot of non-imaginative stuff as well, but uh, it, it is a great place to play. They, the crowd feel right on top of you as well. So um, it's always nice. Well, we haven't won here for a while, so I was just going to say it's always nice if you do win here. Um, but that's something we want to change, and, and they, they do play such a huge part when, when New Zealand are, are up and about. Well, I think that goes a long way to <clears throat> the scores we've been able to restrict them to. The way that we've started with the new ball has put... In that, particularly in that first game, put New Zealand on the back foot with a couple of early wickets and really tight bowling. Just makes them middle overs so much more important then because you, you got guys like Agar and Zampa and, and guys who can skip through a few overs quick, and you always felt ahead of the game. So, so that that's been great in our first six, which is something that we've we've identified that we haven't been at our best in the past. Um, so I was just I was really pleasing the way that the young guys, um, Big Billy. Uh, AJ, Kane Richardson have come in and probably really stamped their authority on a game so quick, um, which, which can be hard to do in T20 when the ball flies around, you're bowling to good players and only two men out. So the way that the way that they've approached it, and if they do get hit, it, it's, it's no issue. You, you just back to your plans, stick to them, be confident that, that the skipper and you, that the plan you've come up with together is the right one. So um, the, our bowlers have been outstanding so far and, and hopefully that can continue. It does excite you, but it's also it's also caused me a few issues in the past. I've got a little bit carried away and, and you tend to think think a bit too far ahead uh, in my experience. You, you find that you start thinking everything in boundaries and sixes as opposed to just sticking to your game plan because them shots naturally come anyway. So uh, it can be... It can be inviting for guys who come here first time, and we've talked about that. There's guys who have had a bit of experience here now, so um, hopefully we don't fall into that trap again and we can just play some good cricket. The game that we played against them in Sydney, we got right on top early and we were able to maintain that pressure. We got, we didn't let Munro and Guptill get away, which we know they can be so damaging at the top of the order. Um, and then their game against New Zealand, uh, against England, um, it was just a really good contest, I think, in Hamilton, the wicket probably played better than it looked. Um, New Zealand, they, they bowled to their plans, they stuck to their plans pretty consistently and probably forced England to go away from, from their plans. So uh, I think it's just about trying to maintain pressure. If you, can, if you can get on top early, hopefully you can really squeeze that middle order. And we, we know they're going to keep playing their shots when you've got guys uh, coming in, playing their first or second game, um, like the, the middle order, and then you throw the Groen home in there. We know they're going to go hard as well. So... Um, early wickets and then try and get them guys in against the new ball would be the ideal plan and and really make them take risks against against our, our best bowlers in the power play. Yeah, he's obviously disappointed through that one-day series not to not to be selected. Um, but at the end of the day, he averaged 22 for, for quite a long period of time there. Um, and he knows that was, that's not good enough as a front-line batsman in an international team. So I think once he got over the initial disappointment, he was able to to take stock and, and reflect on that and probably go back and, and identify what he needed to change in the one-day game um, to be more more consistent. He had been very consistent in shield cricket leading up to that as well, so I think he almost felt as though he had changed his game and then didn't get the opportunity. And now we're seeing that just flow-on effect from, from a really, really productive summer so far. But at the same time, there was other guys pushing for selection and they got the spot, and um, that happens in, in games. And... We've seen now he's, he's been at his destructive best, but he's also been at his clinical best and, and, and very game aware in that game at, at Hobart when we're two for not many, two for four, um, played a beautiful innings to get 100. But the way that he went about it to get to that first 40, 50, 60, to build a partnership with Darcy Short and also make sure that the game was almost almost in our pocket before he started to expand. And, and that's probably been the biggest change in his game. Um, I suppose in the past he's tended to get on a roll and then keep going and keep going until you ride your luck a bit too much. But I think he's, he's, he knows how to go through the gears now. You, you get a bit of a flow on, you get a break, and then you, you pull it back and, and just control the game. So that's probably been the biggest change in his game. And, and we all know the how, how great a striker he is, uh, all the shots he's got. So just the, that little pulling back 10% at times just to reassess his situation. He's a phenomenal player when he gets in. I saw the fixture this morning. There's no chance that uh, I'll be missing my wedding. Um, that would be, it'd be a, bit, a bit tough leaving Amy at the altar there, wouldn't it? Uh, so, no, it'll, it'll just, I think this, the second game that Kings Eleven plays on the 13th, so that'll give me plenty of time to get over there and, and only miss one game, luckily.
Um, having one of my good mates, Hodgie, as coach, he knew about it already. Well, he knows about it now. Um, I did wait wait a little bit longer to send him the invite before the auction. So, um, yeah, it's just a case of missing one game. But hopefully playing with Kings over a three-year period, that, that's not the end of the world. Maxie's going to be my MC, so we and we play them as well. So, um, no, I think guys like Davey and, and that, I think they'll just... They got a job to do, and for the, for their franchise, so I'm sure that they'll they'll be in India. Obviously, from seeing a little bit the other night, but talking to Sam Curran, who played at Auckland here with Chapman, um, got a look. It's got a bit of an idea about how he plays and and stuff like that. So Sam was very very helpful in coming forward with some info about him. But um, it's always exciting when guys come into the international game after playing so well in domestic cricket and finally get their opportunity. It's it's great for, for them and great for the fans to see new players coming through and really dominating and, and having a big impact on, on international cricket.